you are most welcome to today's second service. We want to take this time to appreciate God's servant in the house as women and mothers in Transformers Chapel to say thank you. We want to say thank you for allowing us to be ourselves. We want to say thank you for allowing us to celebrate motherhood. We want to say thank you for giving us a space on this platform, on this altar. To God be all the glory. In the first service, I think we need to get the tape because of time. It was awesome. God allowed me to preach about nurturing godless seed. Every mother should get that seed. That's that CD. Every mother, mother to be, you get that seed. You continue to listen to it over and over and over and over again. Even mothers, or even grandmothers, get them. Get that CD and play it because it's to have responsibility. Praise the Lord. I said in first service that you will never stop being a mother. The day you stop praying for your children is the day that you, you are no longer, you are no, you are no more. So the responsibility of mothers that God has given unto us is to pray. I said in that first service that when God was creating you, he created you with the seed of help. He put into every mother to help their children. And I said three people because God said it is not good for a man to be alone. I'm going to give to him a help that will meet his need. So when God was creating us as mothers, he put that seed of help into us. He created us, he formed us as mothers to help. And I said, three major people in your life that you must be available to help. I said in first service, I said, number one, your husband. I said, your husband is there for you to help him to succeed. As a mother, as a woman, number one priority is your husband. And I said, in my place, he said, if a woman is succeeding and the husband is not succeeding, the woman is in trouble. Where I came from, they will tell you that you have used him to make money. That is tradition. So if you are succeeding, you make sure that your husband is succeeding. So it's the responsibility of us mothers, women, wives to make sure that God created you because of a man. Adam was fine doing his business but God looked at him that it is not good for him to be alone if I allow him to be alone he will behave like a monkey because when you play too much with a monkey you live with a monkey you start behaving like a monkey so God wanted himself he wants somebody like him so he created a woman to stand in gap and to do what he wants to accomplish so we mothers, we are in our, the lives of our husband to help him, not to pull him down. To lift him up, to make sure that he succeed. I vow, I said to God, I said, hold me responsible if my husband failed. And my husband is in the house today, can bear me witness of my prayer life. Waking up at night and running before them, God, before God Almighty. You must succeed. That is why I will fight you spiritually. I will fight you physically if you want to pull his work down. Why? Because he must succeed. He must succeed. That should be the heartbeat of every mother. Every wife, your heartbeat is for your husband. Lord, my husband must succeed. He must make it. That is why I am created. And God can never make mistakes. He created you for that man. To help him. Number two, your children. Your children must succeed. Especially your son. Your son must make it. If you have a son, you do anything for that boy to break through. And that is what we have come to do today. We have come to pray for our children because our children must succeed, our children must break forth. Our children must make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is what all mothers, mother's Day is all about. 
is a day that we are set apart to make sure that something moves forward in the life of our children. That is why I said in first service, if you are a mother and you miss this service, you might not recover from it. Because this is a service that we have all prepared for as executive of this church. We have prepared for it physically. We have prepared for it spiritually. I can't tell you how many days of prayer and fasting that makes this prayer to stand. That is why I know after the prayer of today, that those your children will not remain the same. You are your responsibility. Number two is towards your children. Your children must make it. And number three responsibility, I said in the first service, is your pastor must make it. Your pastor must succeed. You must be available around your pastor to help him in any capacity. And I use the example of Jesus Christ. The ministry of Jesus Christ. From the birth of Jesus Christ to his ministry to his death to his resurrection, women are all around him. Women gave back to him. A mother gave back to him. And I noticed from the scripture after the naming of Jesus Christ, that was the last time I had the name of Joseph, the father of Jesus. After the naming ceremony, Joseph disappeared. We never heard anything about Joseph, but you had Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus. When it was time for miracle to start, Mary knew that this is the set time. Why? Because Mary was part of the life, the growing of Jesus. Mary was part of his life. Mary was there doing what he's supposed to do. Mary was the one that knew when the time came for miracle. Even when Jesus Christ did not want to perform miracle, Mary said to, to, to them, whatsoever thing that he tells you to do, you better do it because I know who I have. Because the Bible said, when Joseph was speaking, a man that came, the angels that came to, 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 to welcome Jesus, they worshipped him and as they were prophesying on the child, the Bible said, that Mary kept every word they said concerning Jesus in her heart. And the Bible says she pondered on them. That is a mother. A mother will know every single thing about the, the rising up of, of her children. She will not be found looking look for. She will be always be there for the destiny of her children. Knowing that they are nurturing, as I'm nurturing them right now, they will nourish me tomorrow. And I said to them in the first service, I said the child that you refuse to nurture, no, we will not nourish you. If you are not there when they are growing up, they will not be there when you are old. I said in America, you see everybody, including men and women. The husband will go out to 5 a.m. In the morning, he will come back 6, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. at night. The wife, too, they will be running after dollar. They will be running two, three services, uh, two, three services, two, three works, jobs. They will be going from one place to another. Some will not rest. I was with one, one time. For two, four, I spent three weeks in the house. For a week, I didn't see the man of the house. For a week, I did not see the man of the house. From one job to another. He will come back briefly. He will sit down on the, on the, the one that I just went to ease myself. I now saw him in the study. After almost one and a half weeks. He was doing online course again. In school. And he's doing like three jobs. If not, he won't catch up with his B. That is not life. And some of their wives also, they do that. Running after money. They come and see their old age. When they are old, the children will package them and put them in old people's home. Mm. So in Christmas, they package flour once in a year and take to them. Mama, God bless you. Pole. Uh -huh. Until next year. Flour. That one will not be your portion. Create time for your children. Create time for them. That is what I said in first service. Create time for them. Be with them. God is seeking for a godly seed. In Malachi chapter 2. Chapter 2 verse 14. He said I'm looking for a godly seed. 
produce for me a godly seed. Not just any kind of children. Godly children. The children that will serve God. The children that will love God. The children that will obey God. Not vagabond. Oh God. That is what God is asking for every mother. Children that will have good character. That is what God is asking you to produce. Not just a medical doctor. Not just a lawyer. Not just a banker. A banker without integrity. That is not what God is asking us to produce for him. If we stand where God has put us as mothers. And we take time to bring up our children. Corruption will stop in Africa. Corruption will stop. But mothers nowadays we are running up and down. We are competing with men. We want to be like them. Where are we going? Where are we going? In my place, I said the house that you, you built, instead of training your children, you are building them. Say the children will sell it. God forbid. If you raise up vagabonds and you build gigantic buildings and you now all day you hand over to vag- vagabonds, what will you get when you are no longer? Nothing. They squander it. That is why we must wake up as mothers. We must be available to take care of our children. Let's leave the men to go and sort for it. We mothers stay with them. They are hunters. Let them go and hunt. I understand some of us are single mothers. You need to pay bills. You need to pay school fees. You need to take care of many things, but notwithstanding great time. Time can still be created out of no time because if you understand that this is a destiny you are dealing with and you know what tomorrow will be be given because of your own old age. A time will come you can't run up and down again but you need the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. You need your children to be there for you. If there is no help from you to them when they are growing, they will not have any feelings for you tomorrow. I discovered that. I discovered that. If you don't take time to be involved in their lives, you will cry tomorrow, God forbid. I gave the example of my mother-in-law. She loved her children to the bone. My mother-in-law loved her children. My husband happens to be her firstborn. The first son. I got married to him. You should know what I should expect. And I saw love. I saw love between the father, a mother, and a son. And I was contending with that love. What God has joined together. Let no mother in law put asunder. This is my husband. My husband. My husband. My husband. And I have five powerful sister in laws. They dealt with me. <laughs> my husband is there today. I'm saying it is first in his presence. Why? Because I was contending. I want to take it by force. It's not done by force. It's not done by force. You, you, you prove yourself. You prove yourself and you buy your way into the heart of everyone. Then you take hold of your husband. And that is what I did. I picked my mother-in-law and I loved her. I love her. I love her more than my husband. My husband is there. He knows I love his mother more than him. And because I bought the heart of that mama. I took her hand and I put it like this. You are my mother. And I put it under my armpit. Then she becomes my friend. If I have any challenge, I will call her. Mommy, it is this again. We stand together in prayer. A very, very committed woman of prayer. She will say to me, relax, it will be well. Fear not, God is with you. That is my mother-in-law. What I will tell my mother-in-law, I cannot tell my biological mother. Why? Because of love for her children. She's in UK now. She just came back to the second time this year. I said, we are fighting between the one in UK and me. I want her here, the one in UK too. They are dry. So I said, I want her. My father-in-law said, before she can step to my place, I must carry two of them. <laughs> that she, he will not allow her to come except two of both of them. Why? Because the seed that this mama has sown in the life of her children, she's enjoying it. The seed of it, she's enjoying it today. If you want to enjoy tomorrow, mothers in the house, sow in the life of your children. Be available for your children. 
That's the best gift you can give to them. The gift of time, not education. The gift of your time. The gift of your time. The Lord will give us understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because of time, I will not be able to go so deep into what we talk. But I stop somewhere. I want to continue before we pray. This service is for prayers. I said to them, I talked about training. That is the foundation of bringing them up. Because the Bible talked about us training our children in the way that they should go. So that when they are old, they will not depart away from me. There is a way. There's a way that that your child must go. There's a way that your daughter must follow. But they don't know that way. They need you to be available to show them that way. Praise the name of the Lord. So, and I said, the tools to use in training those children, I said, number one is the word of God. You create the word of God inside of them. I said it in first service. Create the word of God. Sit down with your children. Share the word of God. Bring them up in the way of the Lord by the manual. This is the manual of the word of God. Is this manual. If you buy a refrigerator and you don't read the manual, if you undo it badly, you will destroy that refrigerator until you go back to the manual. It might not need that electrical something, but it's just one, maybe one button you need to express. But if you go back to the manual, you will know what and what to do. The word of the Lord is the manual on how to train them. Great time. Study the word of God with your children. Mothers in the house, I'm talking to you this morning. Great time. Study the word of God. Teach them the word. Bring them to church. Bring them to church. When our children were growing, thank God they, they grew up here. They grew up here. When they were growing, there is no service my children don't attend. Somebody says, because you are a pastor's wife. Even when I'm not a pastor's wife, my children still goes to school. Come to church. As I'm coming to church in the morning, I've dressed them up. We are coming together. One day, one woman has me at the other side when they are still growing. How did you manage to bring them every Sunday to church? I said the same way I take them to school every day. They wake up five o'clock to go to school. Why would they wake up five o'clock to come to church? So I said the same way. You said because she has not woken up. So she's not coming today. She stayed without self. Then now self possess her. Eh? I said the same way I dress them for church, for school. The same way they must go to church. I tell you, you go to church, you tell me you are not going, I put a rope on your neck. And I draw, I, it's by force, by fire, you come to church. And when you come to church, you must sit down. You must sit down, not walking around. You sit down. I tell them when I'm going to Sunday, when I'm going to church, I tell them, as we are going, if you need to go to toilet, go to toilet. Because if I turn where I'm sitting and I see you walking up and down, you say you are going to toilet, I will eat you up. So everybody, they behave orderly. They grow up, you all saw them. Those that saw them when they are growing up, some of you are here. Please, let's wake up. Let's wake up. And program the word of God in the life of our children. Be available. It will take you years. It will take you time. Ten minutes of your day per day. Study the word of God to them. Tell them what to do. Tell them what not to do. Because if you don't tell them what not to do, they do anything they like. The truth is always bitter, but I will tell you the truth. If it's working for me, it can work for you. Create the fear of God through the word of God into their heart. So that wherever they get to the fear of God, we'll be the one directing them. Not your fear. Some of us have created our fears into the heart of our children. So when they are not longer with you, they drop your fear for you and carry their own normal selves. But if you create the fear of God, no matter where they get to, the fear of God that you have created into their hearts, we continue to lead them. They will fear God even when you are not there. They will behave well even when you are not there. So the word of God is number one. The number two that I share will be the second one. Then let's share number two. I said discipline. You discipline them. There is no way you can train a child without discipline. You discipline them when they are wrong. Don't take chances. Don't say, I love her. I love her. Even if she's the only one you have. Train her. Discipline her when she's wrong. That is what will give you peace tomorrow. The 
discipline them. You, 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 you correct your child, you spank her, and she spank you back, and you rub her head. You are gonna. You have died. You have you are gone. Because one day she will slap you. In public, she will slap you. I've seen in a place, I told them in the first service, in a place where gathering, and a child, the mother spanked her, she spanked the mother back. I was like, I was, I was, I was vibrating. Where I sat, I was vibrating. I was saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, help me not. Then I said, God, just make this boy to eat me. Okay? Then I will fire. Huh? And as God will have it, she pour, he pour my, out the way of beating his mom. He poured my drink. I said, thank God. Then I picked him. In presence of his mother, I spanked him three times. This boy rolled on the floor. The mother was about, I said, if you carry him, leave him. I said, he will not die. I said, if you don't treat him now, he will disgrace you and die tomorrow. Free of, of stupidity. I said, leave him, let him cry. He cried and cried and cried. Under the table, by the time that he finished crying, after 15 or 20 minutes, he got up, sat down, two, four hours. This boy, Pam, When the mother talked and she he wants to react, he will look at me. He, he, I was, I said, good. Discipline them. In the house, you tell your son, sit down, he must sit down. A child of six years old is commanding you. It's an abomination. Where is the mother? Eh? Where is the mother? If I'm the one that born you, Hada. Discipline your children. And your parents here, yeah, some of you. Your husband will be disciplining your children and you'll be complaining. I, I pity you. When you get up, go and read Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. You see that the evidence they are to you, to you tomorrow. If you refuse them to be disciplined, you know, some of us mothers are so are so dangerous. We don't want our husband to control or to, to take care, to take their position. You pamper the children, you over pamper them. Tomorrow you'll be the one carrying picture all around. Please anoint, please anoint. Have you ever seen any man carry picture to anoint? They don't have time. Do they have time? Do they have time? Do they have time? Do they have time of picture? Eh? Everywhere, mothers, everywhere we go is with picture. We carry the number one, number two, number three. If you have ten, some of us ten pictures. And anywhere we get to, you see boom, pictures. Amen. You show the picture of your children. Why? Because evidence to the heart of the mother. That's what Proverbs chapter 10 verse 1 said. He said, if you refuse to train them, he said, tomorrow they be evidence to your heart. God forbid, they won't grieve you. Your children will be arrows in your heart, not in your hand, not in your heart. I said, there will be arrows in your hands, not in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, please discipline them. The Bible said that if you build them small, they will not die. If you beat them small, they will not die. When a child is strong, you have corrected that first time, second time. Third time, he needs to be disciplined with the rod of Cain. Cain. And you just take the, the succulent part of his hand. Then you, you eat it like three times. And you tell him, the time you do that next time, I will give you ten. If you try it again, you give him that ten. And you tell him, the time you do it again, I will give you twenty. By the time he knows that you are serious, he will think twice before he does that thing again. That's discipline. I, I love my children. I love them. I celebrate them. But I tell you, if you ask my son, he will always tell you, Ah, oh, mommy, I will not forget the day you beat me. I tried. Today, they give me rest. They give me peace. Far, far away they are. They behave to the glory of God. Please, let's stay and take charge as mothers. Let's take control as mothers. Some of us, the lifestyles that we live is an abomination in the presence of our children. In the presence of our children, you talk to your husband anyhow. You tell him you are stupid. You tell him anything you want to do, do. You even put your hand and you look at him. Some of us that, that are FT more than him, we beat them and we, we sit down on them and say, so yeah, talk. Your husband. Your husband, though. Your husband, though. Your husband. Your husband, your husband, you talk to him anyhow in presence of the children. Some of us even instigate the children against their father. Abomination. Tomorrow it will come back and bite you if you are not careful. Please, let's be careful. When your husband is trying to put things in place, support him. Support him. I remember in those days 
When my dad is disciplining us because we are all girls and he believes that he must discipline us for us to be responsible. And I thank God today, all of us very responsible to us. When he was disciplining us in those days, as we'll be talking, my mom will be talking. As we'll be talking, my mom will be talking. My dad will say this, my mom will add a hole. He'll be putting Jada on top. And my dad too will be putting a hole. I will, I will look at my mom like this. I will turn and say, if you like, mommy, not you. I'm staying my home. He will say that. My dad will say. He will say. I'll put on them together. Today, I'm giving them peace. In my husband, there is no one day my husband ever go there to report me that this is what my wife did. For 22 years, you should know that that man tried. That woman tried. Parents in the house. This is the reason why we are celebrating ourselves. We are celebrating mothers. Mothers, take charge where God has put you. Let's take charge. Discipline. 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 Then number three is love. Love. You love them. You love your children. If you love them, you will discipline them. In those days when my father was disciplining us, we thought it, 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 it was hatred. But today, I celebrate him. Tomorrow, they will celebrate you. You discipline them in love. You show them you love them. Show your children that you love them. Because of time, you discipline them in love. You teach them in love. You correct them in love. Don't correct them when you are hungry. You might miss. And do them. So you do everything in love. Because of love. So love them. And then you control them. Love and control works together. Then number four is you pray for them. You pray for them. That is why we have come today to pray for our children. To pray for our children, we have come to pray for our children. The power of our praying mothers. When we pray for our children, heaven, heavens open. When we pray for our children, things begin to happen. We cannot overemphasize the place of prayers in the lives of our children. When the reporters ask me that, how do you manage with job? How do you manage with raising children and taking care of husband, taking care of that? I said, I said to them that that is why prayer is needed. There is no way you can do it by yourself. You need strength from above. And when we pray, strength comes from above to be able to do such. That is why you see a mother. She's nursing a mother. She's nursing a baby. She's there with her baby. She's doing her job. She come back. She, everything her husband is eating. The house is neat. She's putting everything in place because of prayer. The prayer that we pray for our children are conversion of our faith. I read the scripture. Because of time, I will not be able to. Will not be able to go deep into that. There was a woman a woman in 2 Kings 2 Kings chapter 4 please at home mothers go and read it chapter 4 from verse 8 to 37 I will not be able to read those scripture because of time it's about a woman that was barren but she met with the prophet Elisha. And she welcomed that prophet into their house, into their home. And when the man of God saw that she was lacking something, she asked the messenger, his son, Geasi, what can we do to this woman? And they said she lacked children. The man of God prayed, as the Lord God Almighty live it. By this time, come the light time of life. You shall embrace a son. And after nine months, the word of the Lord came to pass. The woman had a child. And it came to a time one day. This woman and her husband, this son, this child grew up and followed his father to the farm. And the boy screamed, My head. My head, 
And there is something that the man said there. He said, take him to his mother. Take him to his mother. Where? Why his mother? Why? Because in the hands of mother, there is healing. In the hands of a mother, there is deliverance. In the hands of mother, there is hope. In the hands of a mother, there is liberty, freedom. God has put everything healing in the hands of mothers. As you are seated in that your hand, God has made it a miracle hand. Eventually, that boy died. And a mother put the child on the bed of the man of God. Shows the level of respect and regard that this woman has for the man of God. It believed in this man of God, Elisha, that something must be done. I refuse my son to die. And she stepped out and said to her husband, send me a chariot with a driver. I need to go and see a man of God. I believe in his ministry. I know something will happen. And the husband asked him, ask her, today is not the day you normally go. It's not a Sabbath day. Why are you going to see the man of God, the woman said something. It is shall be well. I said to somebody this morning as a mother, I prophesy into your life, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with your son. It shall be well with your children. It shall be well with your daughter. It shall be well with your husband. Maybe you came in here to this service this afternoon. You left a problem at home. By the time that you get back to that house, it has turned to testimony. The woman said, it shall be well. He entered into the house, into the car, and said to the driver, just continue to go. Until I ask you to stop, no stopping. When he got to the man of God, Elijah, he said, it is well with you. Is it well with your children? Is it well with your husband? The woman said, is well. I prophesy into your life right now. I said to your womb, it is well. I said to your body, it is well. Daughters of destiny, it is well with you. It is well with you. It moved from it shall be well to it is well. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above all name, I declare once again that it is well with you. Because you came into Transformers Chapel this afternoon. Because you answered to the call. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. Wherever it has not been well before. It is well with your finances. It is well with your body. It is well with your womb. It is well with your blood. Every part of your body. I decree it is well. And to cut the long story short. It became well. The man of God followed her. And restoration took place. The child came back to life. Why? Because a woman professed with her mouth. With her mouth, she said, it is well with my children. It is well with my son. And it became well with his son. We'll be rising up and we'll be praying for our children right now. As mother, if you like, father, just sit down. But for mothers, please, you must not sit down. You must rise up to pray for your children. You pray this prayer as if this is the last prayer you are going to pray. This is that the last prayer you are going to pray. And I'm so convinced by the power of God that as you are getting back home, things will be well. God said to me, he said to me, as I was preparing this service, he said to me that the battle is over. 
he said to me that the battle is over and I come to declare to you that that battle is over I don't know the battle that you are fighting but God said that you tell you that that battle is over in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we'll be rising up and we'll be praying how many of us are ready to pray for our children because this meeting is all about prayers and we are going to pray we are not in a hurry to go to anywhere listen to me food is waiting for you gift is waiting for you drink is waiting for you there is nothing to miss you are going to be satisfied if you can wait longer you will partake out of this cake everything is available for us today we are going to be praying for our children in second chronicles chapter 26 second chronicles chapter 26 in second chronicles chapter 26 we'll be going to be reading from verse 1 to 9 verse 1 to 9 from then from 16 to 18 no from 16 to 21 but i will not read it as i'm praying we'll be seeing the scripture We'll be, because of time, I suppose to read them, but because of time, I'm not going to read it. But this prayer, we are going to pray it. We must pray it. In that second chronicle, second chronicles chapter 26, beginning from verse 1 to 2. Beginning from verse 1 to 2. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the rule of his father Amaziah. The people took Uzziah and made him king. The people gathered together and took Uzziah and made him king. There are kings maker. There is no way that your children will get told that we take their efforts to get there. They need a pass of destiny. Your children need a pass of destiny to help them to get to the top where God has ordained them to be. There is nobody that can make it on their own. They need a pass. We are going to be saying, Father, send a pass to my children. We are going to be crying it, Mother. Father, send a pass to my children. Let's begin to pray as mothers. Warrior mother, send a pass to my children. Almighty God, send a pass of destiny to my children, King Makers. Oh Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, send a pass of destiny to my children. Oh Lord, from the north or the south or the east or the west, send a pass of destiny to my children. The adore yes children. The Adani adore yes children. And Rebecca adore yes children. Oh Lord, you will see a pass of destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Your boss at the office will love you and promote you. Your lecturer at school will love you, will look for you to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us of destiny that will help you to the top. You will not get dead in the name of Jesus. Father, raise up, help us. Help us from my children wherever they are. In the name of Jesus Christ, my children will not lack air. Raise people, oh Lord, that we have my children. Send a pass of destiny to my children, dear yeah, Lord. Oh Lord, send a pass of destiny to my children in the name of Jesus Christ. They are helpers, we not dislike them. They will not offend. They are helpers in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, God of Abraham, have mercy, my Jacob. Send a pass of destiny to my children in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. We are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. We are praying. I want to also pray this prayer with the whole of our hearts, mothers in the house. If a man is standing near you, don't mind him, just make sure you are praying. I told you that it's your own business when they are doing bad, it's for their father, when they are not doing so well, it's for you, the mother. All of our children will make it in Jesus' name. In verse 2, he built a lot and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his father. The first thing that Uzziah did when his father died was to restore or to recover in the back to Judah. What his father could not do, he did. We are going to be saying, Father, make my children to start where we have stopped. Where me and my husband stop, that is where our children will continue. In the name of Jesus Christ, I think you know the meaning that is your children will be greater than you. We are going to be saying, Lord, our maximum will be their minimum. Our maximum, 
the maximum of me and my husband was so everything that we achieve will be the minimum of our children in the name of Jesus Christ how many of us are ready to pray that prayer Lord make my maximum to be the minimum of our children oh Lord in the name of Jesus Christ begin to pray what his father could not do he did make our maximum to be is their minimum in the name of Jesus Christ wherever we stop yeah they are going to start it shall be their starting point in the name of Jesus Christ our children shall be better than us my children Joshua don't hear blessing I don't hear don't you shall be great you shall be great you shall be better than me you shall be better than your father Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm fasting because of you, Joshua, don't hear you shall be great. I remove every stopping block, oh God, against your greatness. You shall be greater than your parents. You shall be greater than us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall be great. Blessing, you shall be great. Princess, blessing at your life, you shall be great. I prophesy into your life, you shall be great. Jesus precious name we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ we are praying we are three in verse three it says 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign 16 years old King Uzziah began to reign my children will make it on time we are going to be prophesying my children you will make it on time no delay in your life Begin to pray that prayer. My children will make it on time. My children, you will make it on time. On time, on time, on time, you will make it on time. You will make it on time, Joshua. Princess, you will make it on time. You will make it on time. On time blessings for you. You will get married on time. You will not be delayed. You will have your children on time. You will not be delayed. I will carry my grandchildren on time. You will not be delayed. My children shall be promoted on time. They shall be favor on time. On time blessings. I cast the spirit of delay. I cast the spirit of delay. In the life of my children. I cast the spirit of time wasting. I cast the spirit of a potent miracle. I cast the spirit of a potent breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My children, you will make it on time. My children, you shall make it on time. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will make it on time. You will never be delayed. You shall never be delayed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Prayer 4. Second Chronicles chapter 26 that we read. In verse 5, the Bible said that he sought God in the day of Zechariah. Who had understanding in the vision of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Zechariah was a priest in the life of Uzziah. He was the one prophesying into the life of that child. And that child, because Zechariah knew that the set time, the, 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 he has the understanding of time. He was able to help Uzziah to climb up. We are going to be praying. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father of God today. I ask, oh Lord, that today send profitable relationship to my children. Profitable relationship. People that will influence them for good. Profitable relationship. Send to my children. Send profitable relationship in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the sake of this prayer today, send profitable relationship, oh God, to my children, wherever they are, oh Lord. People that will influence my children for good, not for bad. Send profitable relationship to our children. Send profitable relationship to my children, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, anyone in the love of my children that is bad, that is influencing them for bad, I remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. I remove unprofitable friendship, unprofitable relationship from the life of my children. I remove them from their classes. I remove them from their offices. I remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, my children will continue to be relevant. My children, oh Lord, shall serve the Lord. My children shall love the Lord. My children shall matter where it matters. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my children will prosper. I speak into the life of my children. My children will make it. Profitable relationship. No one will bring them down. No one will put them into trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, send profitable relationship to my children, mighty God. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus Christ. God will send profitable relationship to your children. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anyone that wants to bring them down, God will take them off their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that wants to put them into trouble, God will take them out of their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number 5. In verse 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 4. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garment, even his sword, and his bow and to his gadu. Jonathan removed everything and gave it to David. That is unusual. How did he went home? He went home naked. He saw the God that can explain. Jonathan took everything and gave it to David. We are going to be saying, Father, send unusual help to my children. Unusual help, unusual help. Unusual help are sent to my children. Unusual help are so Lord, sent to them. People that will be uncomfortable. People that will be uncomfortable for my children to be comfortable. People that will be uncomfortable for my children to be comfortable. Mighty God, send unusual, unusual help. Send to my children. People that will be uncomfortable for them to be comfortable. Help them, oh Lord. Oh Lord, help my children. Help that is not common. Help that is not usual. Unusual help, I send them to my children. The time that has never been in the history of men. Send help to my children. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. I want us mothers to pray this one very well. Some of us, our children have grown up very shortly, they will be getting married. But there is a story of a man, a man of God that just waited. And as the preacher pronounced, you may now kiss the bride. As the man was about to kiss the bride, my wife come. As he was about to kiss, the groom was to kiss the wife. And the wife said, I'm a witch. They have sent me to destroy you. To prove to the world that we have power than the God that you say you are serving. There is nothing he can do because they had already been joined together. The man of God lived in that life over, he's a prominent preacher in Nigeria. You're going to pray this prayer. Mothers will hold your breast and you hold your, and your womb and we say, Father, my children shall not marry their enemies and my children will not marry my enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. My children will not marry your enemies. My children shall not marry my enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. My children, you will not marry your enemies. My children, you will not marry my enemies in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My children will not marry their enemies. Oh. My children will not marry my enemies in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My Second Chronicles chapter 29. We are back to Second Chronicles chapter 29, verse 16. Verse 16 to 19. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For his sons got his name, the Lord is God. And went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Anazir, the priest, went in after him and went and with him, first come priest of the Lord. For there was, for, for, for the that they were villains men and they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him it pertain not unto thee Uzziah to burn incense unto the law but to the priest the son of Aaron that was consecrated to burn incense go out to the sanctuary go out of the sanctuary for thou hast trespassed neither shall it be for thy honor for the Lord God but from the Lord then Uzziah was wroth and had the censers in his hand to burn his head, and when he was wroth with the priest, leprosy even rose from up in his forehead before the priest. 
in the house of the law from before the incense altar. When he became strong, he became proud. He started well. If you get drunk, go and read, go and read it. He received help from the Lord with all of his help. He did not finish well. My children, you will finish well. My children, you will finish well. Begin to prophesy. Begin to say, my children, you will finish well. Everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, every David, that your yes, children, you will finish well, Lord. You will finish well, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, you will finish well. You used to be rich. It should not be a portion. You used to be rich. You are no longer rich. It will not be your portion. You will finish well. You used to be anointed. Ah, it will not be your portion. He used to serve the Lord. It will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my children, you shall finish well. You started well with the help of God. You will finish well. You will finish well. Isaiah did not finish well. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ, you told the help in the you will finish well. Joshua, I tell you, you will finish well. You will finish well. Joshua, I tell you, you will finish well. You will finish well. Princess, I tell you, you will finish well. You will finish well. You will finish good. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not finish like Isaiah. You will not be disgraced. You will not be disgraced. You will not walk in disgrace. In the name of Jesus Christ, my children will finish well. My children, you will finish well. I declare and prophesy, you will finish well in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Last time we will pray. Father, deliver my children from the expectation of enviable relations. Expectation of enviable relations. There are some people that will send their children to school. You are the one that paid their children's school fees. There are some relations that you are taking care of them, yet they are not happy with you. You are doing everything for them, for their children, yet they are still looking at your children. It's like they should come down. In that name that is above all name, God will rescue your children from the hands of everybody's resolutions. Anyone that is envy your position, envy your children, let's begin to pray. Oh Lord, deliver my children. Deliver my children, oh Lord, from expectation of everybody's everybody relations. Deliver my children, oh Lord, from expectations of everybody relations. In the name of Jesus Christ, deliver my children. Deliver my children. Deliver my children. Deliver my children. From expectations of everybody relations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. All the mothers, put your hands on your head. Both mothers to be. And mothers right now. I want to declare to you. You shall not labor in vain. I can't hear your amen. Sarah was the one that labored. He gave back to Isaac. When Isaac was buried, Sarah was not there. He was, she was in the grave. On the day of your good news, you will not be in the grave. Amen. The day of your children's marriage, they will not observe one minute silence. Amen. In the day of your children's graduation, somebody else will not represent you. Amen. In the day of your good tidings, they will not keep you inside the room. Amen. You will not suffer stroke. Amen. You will not see a partition. Cancer will not know your roots. In the name of Jesus Christ. No woman will replace you in your husband's house. Anyone that is warm enough to take your husband will go for yourself. Anyone that is planning your death will die for yourself. You are the one that labor. You eat the fruit of your labor. In the name of Jesus Christ. God Almighty will fight for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. what key women will not kill you? Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hope you enjoyed, touched, and blessed to your next level. Worship with us at Transformers Chapel. We are situated on Kilimani Road, Elsie Plaza, Ophelageo Maraquet, Adams Arcade Roundabout. Visit us on our website, www.transformerschapel.org or our Facebook page, Transformers Chapel, Nairobi. Mm -hmm.